So we found out about grad, and that led us on to sketch out a neat method for finding the minima and maxima of multivariable functions, which we call gradient descent. In this video, we'll look at what happens if we want to find the minima or maxima subject to some constraint, that we want to find the maximum somewhere along a line or something like that. And this is called the method using Lagrange multipliers. So what we did in the last video is we looked at a function like this one, f here. This function f is x times the exponential of minus x squared plus y squared, and it's one of the standard MATLAB examples. And I've plotted below it here a contour map of the values. If I now plot just the contour map, I can plot out the vectors of grad f. As we said, these vectors are perpendicular to the contour lines, and they point up the steepest gradient. Now let's return to the function we were looking at last time, f equals x squared y, which is the Khan Academy standard example for this problem. Last time we plotted grad f on both the 3D version, and then dropped that down onto the corresponding contour map. Actually, it's going to be easier if we now just work with the contour map itself. So here's the contour map, and what I've done is I've used the gradient function in MATLAB to just plot out the gradient perpendicular to the contours everywhere in the space. So the low sides are at negative y down here, and the high sides are at positive y up here. Now what happens if I want the maximum value for this function, f equals x squared y, but constrain it to lie on a circle? Where's the highest point anywhere on that circle? Say I have a circle of radius a squared, and I want to find the minimum and maxima on that path as I go around that circle. Now you can imagine that describing an equation for how x squared y varies as I go around a circular path is going to be a complete nightmare. But that's not the question we were actually asked. What we wanted to know was what's the maximum along that circle, not what's the value everywhere on the circle. Now, Lagrange was one of those French mathematicians whose name is inscribed around the Eiffel Tower. And what Lagrange noticed was that when the contours just touch the path, then you'll have found the maximum minimum point. That is, f, when f is a little bit smaller, it won't quite touch the path. See it here in 3D. And when it's a bit bigger, it might cross a couple of times, um, see here in 2D on the contours. But when the contour just touches, then we'll have found the minima and maxima of the function f as we go around the path, our circle in this case. And what Lagrange noticed was that when the contour touches the path, then the vector perpendicular to the contour is in the same direction, up, up to a minus sign, as the vector of the, uh, of the path itself that's perpendicular to the path. So if we can find grad, we can find the minimum and maximum points and solve the problem. If we can find grad perpendicular to the contour on both the path and the function, we're away. So we want to maximize the function f of x, y, which is equal to x squared y, subject to some constraint, which we're going to call uh, the constraint equation g of x, y. And that's the equation of a circle x squared plus y squared. And it has some value, some particular value to the problem we want to solve of a squared. So what we're saying is, if we've got uh, the function doing something like this, and it has its grad that way, and the circle has uh, some uh, path that's doing that, and it's got its grad that way, what we're doing is we're solving grad f is equal to lambda some number times grad g, where lambda is Lagrange, is Lagrange's multiplier, or the Lagrange multiplier. And that's all we really need to do. So we just need to set up this set of equations and then solve them. So if I take grad f is equal to the grad of x squared y, uh, well, that's equal to, if I differentiate for the df dx, I've got uh, 2xy. And if I take df dy, the y just goes and I've got x squared. And I'm saying that that's equal to lambda times grad g, which is equal to lambda times, if I differentiate g, x squared plus y squared with respect to x, I've got 2x. And if I differentiate it with respect to y, I've got 2y. And that's giving me two equations with two unknowns. And I've got a third equation, uh, which is the constraint equation itself that brings in the actual value of the circle I'm particularly interested in. So I've just got to solve that. So if I take the first line, I've got 2xy is equal to lambda times 2x. 
I cancel the two x's and therefore I've got y is equal to lambda straight out. If I take the second row, the y row if you like, I've got x squared is equal to lambda times 2y. But lambda is itself y, so that's equal to 2y squared. So I can say that x is equal to the square root of 2 uh, times y. And I've, because I've done the square root, I've got a plus minus here. And now if I take the, the constraint equation itself, the third one, I've got x squared plus y squared is equal to a squared, but x squared is equal to 2y squared, so that's equal to 3y squared. So then if I square root that, I can say that y is equal to uh, a divided by the square root of 3, and again, because I've done the uh, square root, I've got a plus minus. So those are my solutions. So I can write those out, and I've got the solutions are going to be a over the square root of 3, uh, times, uh, if I take y is 1, then x is root 2 times that, so root 2, 1. And I've got a over root 3 times root 2 minus 1 for y. And I've got uh, all the possibilities, a over root 3 uh, minus root 2 and 1. And I've got a over the square root of 3 of minus root 2 and minus 1. Now, if I find the values of the function, f of x, y, as I go uh, take all of those, so I've got to find x squared, y for that, so that's a cubed over 3 root 3, because I'm cubing that bit in effect, because they're both in x and y, and I've got x squared is 2 uh, plus uh, y is what, uh, times y is 1, so that's 2. Here, I've got the same thing, but I've got what y is negative, so now I've got a cubed over 3 root 3 times minus 2. This one's y is po uh, plus, and when this squares, the minus sign is going to disappear, so this is going to give me another plus solution. 2 over 3 root 3 a cubed. And I've got here, here y is negative, so I'm going to get a minus here, uh, a cubed over 3 root 3. So I've got a max, uh, a max, I've got a min, I've got a max, the way I've written it out, and another min. So I've got two positive solutions, and I wanted to find the maximums, so they, those are there, and I've got the minima as well for free. So let's look at what that looks like now on the graph. So two of our solutions are here and two here. When we switch to the 3D view, uh, we can see that the two with positive y are maxima, and the two with negative y are the minima. So that's really neat. What we've done here is we've used our understanding of gradients to find the minima or maxima subject to some constraint equation, like a straight line or a circle. And very often we will want to make it that some of the variables in a function that we want to fit are fixed in relation to each other. They have some fixed relationship, like they're around a circle. Uh, so this is a very handy thing to be able to do. It's really useful. So hopefully that was uh, good fun.